All right, hello everyone and welcome to episode three of Blender Basics. I have taken out myself because I noticed watching back that for some reason my webcam and my voice did not line up. I don't know why, consider I'm recording them literally both at the same time along with Blender and I'm not like editing my voice over the cam. So why they don't line up, I don't know. Um, and in terms of that, I mean, I'm using OBS video capture device and OBS to capture my audio like at the same time so why they don't line up I don't know but today we're going to be continuing with Blender so in the last episode we manipulated our character we made him look kind of cool he seems to be happy no one can tell if he's running or jumping or whatever um, so that is that so uh, in today's episode we are going to be focusing on lighting so lighting is important because if I render him right now first of all I don't even have a camera in but let me why can't I bring in the camera okay blender says I can't even bring in the camera why okay. Okay. who knows oh yeah cuz I'm in pose mode <laughs> All right, let's say I bring in a camera and I open up and I drag this camera back, right? So let's check the field of view. Awful. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say I bring it back a little bit and take a look. Not bad. Just up over. Good. Done. A little bit higher. All right, all right. There we go. So let's say I take that right and I render that image. This is what the render looks like, and you can see he's very dark. He's very shadowy. If you are making a render where you, it's a sunny day outside, right? To take it back to my sunny day image here look at they've got the light the Sun is coming down from here they've got the light on them they're shadowing they're casting shadows on each other right and their their faces are nice and lit up now imagine putting this dark image of me that you guys can't even see anymore imagine putting this dark image of me into something that looks like this right it would look really bad now if we're in a dark cave maybe that image I have would work out but in this situation it's not so I'm gonna show you guys how to grab that uh, character and manipulate him so that we are or not manipulate him but manipulate the lighting so that it's a little bit nicer all right now for this render I did it all in one render so it was a big I acted as if it was a scene you can see here this is the render without the background so I did it all in one render and I used Sun lighting because I'm like well they're gonna be out in the Sun whatever but for a single character you have two options typically for a single character what someone recommended to me is that you use at least two sets of area lighting so we're going to work on that right now so let's go back to Blender here and let's get rid of my character because he's not important anymore. Let's bring back into the scene. We're going to get rid of the camera because right now we're not rendering anything. We're just working in the workspace still. All right, so let's take a look in here, right? We've got our character. We've got our bones, whatever. These bones, I don't like them once I'm done posing and I'm working. But at the same time, they do come in handy. So I would suggest leaving them on if you uh, feel comfortable doing so. Uh, sometimes I'll turn them off. If you want to turn them off, all you have to do is click the little eyeball button right here. They will switch on and off. Uh, but we're going to leave them on for now because we're actually going to be using them as a reference point. So you have a couple different options of lights you can do. So if I click Shift, a we get a menu here and you can see there's light you can see there's light there's light probe we're going to be using light 
So we can see there's light, and then we get point, sun, spot, area. Use sun if you're doing a big outside scene and you want to emulate a sun on a shader background, similar to what I showed you before. Point, I'll show you, does not do all that great. It, it, it's exactly as it says. So, like, if you want a small amount of, like, maybe a torch light from Minecraft where you've got torches on a wall in, like, an advanced scene, you can use it. This looks pretty nice. But we're going to be using two different types of lights today. We're going to be using spotlights and area lights. So the first one is spot. And spotlight is exactly as it would be in a theater. It creates a cone of light. So if I drag this cone of light up, and this is the center ray, this line going down the center. So usually, if I'm using a spotlight on a single character, I try and pass it straight through this on its head. I try and uh, manipulate it so that that way I know the beam is basically centered on my character. So I'm just using the move feature, grabbing it up here, it's moving around. All right, so now I've got my character centered in the spotlight. And you'll notice when I add the spotlight, this menu goes over here to object data properties, which is now a light bulb. And that's what happens uh, when you select the light. Uh, this power is really what is going to uh, help us out here. So let's say I want to make this really bright, 150. It's not super bright. But what if I wanted it really bright? Well, I could do 2000. And you can see that looks super bright on top of his head. Now normally, you don't want this to be directly lined up. You want to pull it, click this button, and then we rotate it, and then center it on his chest. That's one option. That doesn't look too bad, although right now it is extremely bright. If I render that, no camera, right. Uh, that's really bright, but let's say we tone it back to, I don't know, 200 watts, eh, 500. That's not bad for like a mini scene. If we wanted it to be outside, maybe I'd push it to a thousand. Uh, if he's right underneath of like bright sun, I, I wouldn't go too far though with that. So that's one option. The other option is working with area lighting. Now area lighting, you want to create at least a two point system. So let's uh, bring in a first light. You can see we have area. And you'll notice we get this little square and you don't want this square usually straight on. So let's manipulate this square. Same thing, it has a ray of light that will center it, that you'll, you know, notice. Uh, so let's manipulate that so that it's uh, angled from the top down still. Let's imagine we're doing like a sun-ish sort of out outdoor uh, shader pack scene. So we're going to shine it down through the middle of his stomach. And uh, let's just uh, go with 100 is really bright for an area light you can see like 1000 on an area light looks like that so for an area light 50 works for like some natural lighting right but you'll notice it looks great head-on but what about like back here or what if we want to bring in some backlighting like a reflection on a water well I suggest if you're going to be doing something that has a little bit of an angled view, you create at least a two point system. So then I'd suggest maybe reducing this to 40. Good, looks good. So let's shift A and bring in another area light. This light system though, let's say we want a off side angle like this on our final render. This is like the angle that we want. We're going to then bring this light in 
and we're going to do a couple things with it. We're going to angle it up. Right, so we're going to bring it this way so it's like in line with him. And then we want it a little bit behind him and we're going to rotate it. That's scaling it. We're going to rotate it in towards him. Pass it through. And if this is 40, we want the backlight to be a little bit stronger. So we're going to hit him with 50 on the backlight. You'll notice now this isn't dark. This has good shadow. And, you know, overall looks pretty good. I'd say, though, I want to actually bring this up to 50. And let's pack this at 60. Still, same thing. Backlit. You can see it has an effect. All right, now, do we have to worry about this side too much? Not really, because we're not going to be focusing on him. Uh, but if we did, we could create a three-point system where we have light coming from over here too. But I'm pretty happy with this. So we are now going to be uh, taking a look at uh, bringing in a camera to the system and testing. So let us uh once again click shift a so before we do that though uh give yourself the angle that you want so let's say let's say here uh, this is the angle i want shift a and there's one option here that says camera and that's it it's just camera so bring in the camera and you'll notice it shows up down here now you do have an option if I click N it brings up a transform menu we can go to tool uh, we can sorry we can go to view and we can lock camera to view so but you'll notice that right now doesn't seem to be working uh, and I don't know why I don't know if it's just me uh, that's having that issue or what that is but uh, I seem to be having that issue quite a lot um, where that doesn't seem to be working so we're just going to do it the old-fashioned way we're going to position the camera ourselves. so we're gonna grab the move tool select the camera highlight it and we're gonna drag it just straight so at this point, it's angled the way we want. It's got the angle on the character the way we want. We just have to now position it up and down and side to side. So that is not too hard to do. Um, and you'll notice right now we're pretty far away. We can zoom in on him, but we're pretty far away. So chances are we can uh, bring the camera in a little bit uh, a little bit closer so if we go to the side we can push in on him a little bit yep and you'll notice we're still fine so we're just going to maneuver the camera now in order to get into the view like this this orange box outlines uh, the camera's point of view what the camera sees in order to get into this area um, you can um, click zero on your number pad if you don't have a number pad uh, you can click this camera button left click it it'll do the same exact thing it'll bring you into the camera view okay so that is it for today today we have learned uh, how to bring in a camera how to bring in lighting and some tips for positioning your lighting you guys can mess around with your settings in terms of how bright or dark you want to make it, what you think will fit best with your scene. One of the cool things about Blender is it is a platform for artists to build and create. So you guys have the art artistic vision to take your creations wherever you want them to go. So I'm not telling you you have to set the first one at light level 50 watts. No, you don't have to do that. You take it where you want it. Uh, but also do keep in mind some things like when you take an area light at 1000 or even 2000 
uh, will look really, really bad in a final render. Uh, so, like, if I were to bump this to 2000, like, this looks like maybe even too bright for, like, let's say you have a police spotlight shining on someone. Like, even that, like, if you're doing a cool scene like that, even that's, like, way too bright for that. So, do keep that in mind. Uh, but, yeah, try and keep your lighting relatively basic, relatively simple. Um, don't overdo it. Uh, if you can, try and condense the amount of lights you have and then be able to maneuver them and manipulate their power in order to get the lighting effects you want. Uh, also, for the camera, uh, as I said, zero on the number pad or this camera button over here to switch back and forth. And shift A to get to this menu to bring in lighting, cameras, all of that stuff. So that is it for now. Hopefully this Blender tutorial was useful for you. If it was, please sure to leave a like down below, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time in the render prep episode of Blender.